everyone, this is Emily Cressy and thank you so much for joining me today. We have something very special in store for you. We're going to be looking at how the world of advertising has changed in the last several years and how your business needs to adapt to keep getting great results in the future and continue to build deeper and more profitable relationships with your clients. Over the course of this presentation, I'm going to teach you how to market your business online and really understand what goes on behind the scenes with online marketing so that you can never be bamboozled or fooled by anyone who's supposed to be doing work for you but isn't getting results. So who am I? Again, it's Emily Cressy with the River Rock Group and I got started in marketing right after college when I worked for a nationwide sales training company as one of their speakers. We would go out and talk about buying real estate, selling real estate, renting it out, those types of things. And you know, let me tell you, I was one of the success stories. I actually went from buying residential rental houses in North Carolina, which I still have several of, to buying apartment buildings across the country and uh, syndicating multi-million dollar deals with uh, commercial land, apartments, mobile home parks, that type of thing. And anyway, what I learned when I was up on stage was that the main thing that everybody wanted to know who was in our audience was how do I get more clients? So what did we tell them to do? We had a marketing plan for them, of course. Just do mailers, join networking groups, put ads in the newspaper, and put out band out signs. Maybe you do some of those things yourself. And well, with the band out signs, they're called that because you have to sneak around like a bandit in the middle of the night to put them out. Seriously, we had a discussion forum of our real estate investor clients and we had people talking about, you know, I go out with my wife on Friday night, we get in the truck with all the signs and we're out there from midnight to two putting out our signs. And I would think, boy, <laughs> sounds like a great date night. <laughs> well, my husband won't come with me when I put my signs out at midnight. Uh, no, but actually, I, I enjoyed putting out my science during the day, you know, I, I walked the walk, just like I taught on stage, that's what I did. So I would go drive around and I got a little pickup truck, which I felt very cool in, and I would, um, you know, at first I was really nervous putting out my science. I would try to look all low-key and just chilling out there by the side of the road with my hammer, nothing going on here, officer. You know, and cops would b drive by and that type of thing, but nothing ever happened. And then one day, something did happen. <laughs> a big, scary code enforcement dude came up and told me that I was not allowed to put up the signs. And in fact, there was actually a $100 per sign per day fine for putting them out. So he told me I'd better drive around and pick up all the signs I had just posted. Well, let me tell you, I got out of there fast. I did not have the money for $100 per sign per day. And after a uh, long talk that evening, my husband and I decided that it was not actually a very sustainable marketing method for us. So I stopped putting out signs and started looking online. And this is actually a picture on the left of my first website, the yellow and green one that I made for my real estate company. And when I say I, I actually mean my husband. <laughs> he coded the whole thing himself. It took forever and he would get really aggravated whenever I asked him to change something because it was so much work. Just one simple change, honey. And we had to go back and change, you know, that same thing like the font color on each of the 25 pages individually. So that was a lot of work. Um, but as I learned more about web development, I found that there were easier ways to build and maintain websites. And I actually dabbled in building my own website, which you see on the right, which was about our guide dog puppy, Kara. She uh, got to do lots of activities like go to movies and baseball games and ride on the bus and those types of things because she was a guide dog in training. So I'd write articles about her and uh, what toys she liked and that type of thing and um, actually begin to generate a lot of money from this little dog website and it actually took off and I was selling thousands of dollars of products every month 
from this website and it had, you know, very little ongoing effort involved. So, you know, we don't have the dog anymore. We had to send her back because she was a guide dog. So she had to go get matched up with a blind person. But we still have the website and it's still making money for us here almost 10 years later. It took me a while, guys, but even I could figure out, uh, you know, maybe there's something to it. And then, you know, fast forward to a few years later, and now I've helped all sorts of different businesses generate thousands of dollars of um, sales of products and services. And it uh, turns out that internet thing is, is here to stay. <laughs> In fact, I even wrote a book about it. This is an Amazon bestseller in the advertising and marketing categories. The title is Online Business Marketing. And you're welcome to pick up a copy. You can get hard copy or Kindle. And it will be a great refresher of several of the things that we'll go over here today. And it actually goes in depth on a lot of topics that we just don't have time to cover here on the webinar. So you can take a look at that after we're done. Okay, so that's me. Now let's talk about your business. So I want you to think about what you're doing with your marketing right now. Are you doing newspaper ads, magazine ads, direct mail, yellow pages? Think about all the places you're spending money to market and what kind of results you're getting with that. And chances are, if you're a lot, like a lot of business owners, you're spending like you always have on your marketing, but you're starting to see the results decline a little bit. And here's the reason why. The internet has fundamentally changed the way that people find, discover, share, shop, and connect. The thing I want you to realize here is that a lot of business owners I talk to are just not getting the results that they used to because their audience is turning to the internet to find them. And if they haven't begun investing in the internet and establishing an authoritative presence there, then they're, they're losing market share. Those calls are not coming in. So let me just share some statistics with you to help bring this home. This says that 300 million citizens in the United States um, have telephones and 200 million of them are on the do not call list. So if one of your standard ways of reaching out to people was through um, solicitation over the phone, you just got smoked. That's not good news. In addition, consumer behavior has changed. 86% of people skip TV ads. 46% of people, or there's been a 46% decline in tech trade show spending and 44% of direct mail is never opened. So if you use television ads, or trade shows, direct mail, your results are probably not as high as you would like. So what are marketers like us doing to combat this? Well, we're shifting away from interruption advertising. The marketplace is telling us that that doesn't work anymore. And we're going where people go to look for us. They're not using the yellow pages as much anymore in most demographics. Instead, people are going to the internet. 60% of all organic clicks go to the top three organic search results. That means if your web page is not one of the first three uh, when people look you up on the internet, chances are they won't click on you. And 75% of users never scroll past the first page of search results. So if you're not on page one of Google, you're missing the boat. So I, I'm basically, it's Google, it's search engines, it's being, you know, instead of letting their fingers do the walking with the yellow pages, people just say Google it now. I mean, that's, that's basically what it's come to. So, you know, if you don't know how to establish an authoritative presence and be on page one of Google, be on the top three search results when people type you in, then it's costing you sales and it's costing you customers. So, how much is it costing you? Well, let's just think about, let's play with some numbers. And you can write down your own numbers here. But let's assume that your average sale is worth $500. So yours could be higher or lower. Just write down a number that makes sense for you. Now, let's say conservatively, you're losing 10 customers per month to your competitors because you don't have that authoritative presence online. 
So how much did that just cost you in lost sales? That cost you $5,000 and that's happening each and every month. Now let's assume that your average client buys from you twice a month. So in one year, that customer value is not 500, it's a thousand. And that $5,000 that you lost each month is now $10,000 per month. What about the lifetime value of the, the client? What about referrals? As your client base declines, your referral base declines too. So overall, I mean, you can see how this stacks up. It's just, it's not a good picture and you need to reverse that trend for your business. So let's break it down. The fundamentals of the internet are very simple. It's the same marketing principles we've been using for years. You need to get your message in front of people and you need to have an effective message that converts them into a client when they get there. So let's look about conversion. Let's talk about conversion first. This is a very exciting topic that I really enjoy going over and it's how you're turning your website into a sales machine. A lot of you have a website, but it might not be giving you the results that you're hoping for. So let's talk about a landing page. And first of all, what is a landing page? This might be the home page of your website. It might be a specially designed page that you send people to via mailings. Or maybe it's your Facebook page. What do you have on Facebook? Is that your landing page? You know, if you have a big Facebook campaign. So a landing page could be any page on the internet that you're targeting as one that you're trying to drive traffic to. And the thing that you want to ask yourself is what do I want visitors to do when they visit the site? That has to be clear to the visitor within about five seconds of them reaching the site. Okay, you need to have a very clear call to action. A call to action is simply an invitation, instructions for your visitor to take a specific action. Generally, you're gonna have them purchase something, sign up for something like an email newsletter, read information to help them, or even call you for an appointment. So you need to be clear on what that is. And here's a great thing to write down. Guys, these are some good bullet points and I want, we'll maybe do a little exercise later if we have some time, but let's look at the things that you want to make sure you have on your website. First, a call to action. Tell them exactly what to do. Call now or enter your email to receive your free special report on how crooked mechanics overcharge for repairs and how you can avoid getting burned. You know, some title like that that's compelling with a special report We'll get a lot more people signing up for your email newsletter than a, a mamsy pamsy join our newsletter kind of a thing. No one wants a newsletter, but they do want and will trade their email for a valuable piece of information that complements the research that they're currently doing. Next, you need to grab their attention in the first three seconds that they're on the page or they're going to hit the back button. The headline is typically the first thing that people notice when they hit the site and it needs to present the number one benefit that they're going to get by working with you. Customer service, a free special report, you know, pain-free dentistry. What is it that sets you apart? What are they going to get? Why should they work with you and not the 10 other people on the first page of Google? Okay, number three, we need to have an email opt-in box or on the top right to get their email address and and or the phone number in that top right spot. That's generally the place you want to reserve for the, the thing that you want them to pay the most attention to, the call to action. Okay, number four, testimonials. You always want to have social proof on your site. Did it work for other people? Should they trust you? Number five, bullet points or easy to skim content to draw them in. People are not gonna dive in reading a lot of small text. We've got it too easy. We want to skim and scan and get the information fast. So don't have a giant small print article without really drawing them in with some easy to skim stuff that compels them to read further. And then appropriate images. Graphics are an important part of the look and feel of a site. So 
they set the mood and you do not want to neglect them. Let's look at a simple landing page here. This is a, um, a landing page that you might use if you were offering people a, a free special report. This one is one that's linked to off of an email and it includes in red you'll see the strong headline, the call to action in this gray box with you know the red arrows and the brighter colors here that draw the eye. If they want to read more than just the headline they can skim these bullet points and there's very limited navigation on this page. This is one it's called a squeeze page. They're squeezing your email out of you and if you don't want to put your email in you're out of options. So this would not be appropriate for the home page of your website but it might be appropriate if you were offering something specific like an event, a training, a webinar, and you wanted to get a list of people who might be interested in that type of a thing so that you could market to them further. Here's another example of a squeeze page. This is actually um, from Ryan Dice. He runs a number of website businesses in Austin and he's always testing things and he publishes his split test results. So I subscribe to that information so we can all keep up to date and benefit from the extensive testing and see what's working in our industry. So here's one that he shared and I want you to look at it for a minute. So what draws your eye here? Where do you tend to look? And for me, it's the graphics. They're brightly colored. They have an email opt-in box at the bottom of the head header and also on the sidebar. So you kind of look at the header and then you look at the sidebar you may read the, you know, the fine print and that type of a thing, but you're kind of compelled due to limited navigation to enter your email here if there's something further. If you want these benefits, then you need to enter your email. Next, this is an example that might be a little bit more feasible for an actual home page of a business website. This one incorporates many of the elements we saw in the previous two pages but it lets you have some nice site navigation and um, you know, offer more details for people that need to read something about you before they commit an email address. So this is a WordPress platform designed site and you can see that they are still using the same focus on collecting email. This is selling an information product called the, Informa the Urban Survival Guide. So up here you can see they have a brightly colored graphical headline oriented email opt-in box and then they have this dark section of content and some more article content here with graphics. So this is for the people who need more information. But Ryan says that actually when a, the space above the fold, which is what you can see on the web page before you have to start scrolling, actually only goes down to about this black area. So you see dark, light, dark above the fold. And the dark does not attract the eye. The light part is what draws you in. And the, having this darker actually discourages people from scrolling down past the email opt-in box. So that's an interesting point on color psychology. And then number six here below, you can see that they have uh, another opt-in form available. So if you did need more information and you did scroll down, whoops, excuse me, I'm scrolling on my mouse, <laughs> then you could see the email opt-in box down here after you read some content and had more trust and rapport with the website. So let's look at another design here. This one I really like. It's a, a handyman site. And as you can see, they want you to call the phone number or fill in the form. So you're ready to go. You're ready to go. You want to take action. And this almost seems like it kind of pops out of the page here. It's, it's all white. On, it looks like it's on top of that blue banner. So it really draws the eye. Again, the phone number is red. Um, it's a nice, nicely done graphical layout. So those are just some examples of how this can work in real life. So Let's think about this in the context of your business. Take some notes here. What's the primary conversion in your business? If you're a plumber and people call you and their sink is leaking, then they're probably going to call. They're probably not going to 
fill out a form and wait around for you to email them back. On the other hand, if you're selling an information product, maybe you want to educate them and offer them a free informational series that gives them a lot of information about what they need to do, including buy your, your informational report. Maybe you have an e-commerce website that sells uh, you know, hard goods that are mailed out. Maybe you, um, you want people to fill in a contact form and you know, request a, a mortgage quote or something like that. So there could be a lot of different things that you want people to do. You want to make it easy for people to be directed by your website to take that next step. And personally, I think everybody should be collecting email, even if that's not your primary call to action. You should have an email opt-in form somewhere on your page because, frankly, um, statistics show it takes an average of seven contacts for someone to be exposed to your business before they decide to take action with you. And if you don't collect their contact information the first time they come to the site, chances are that they will not come to the site and that you will lose that customer forever. So you need to have a very compelling offer for them to subscribe to. And, you know, people people always say, well, you know, I have an email form, but nobody ever opts in. It's because you don't have a compelling reason for them to do so. People don't give away their email addresses, but they will trade it, trade the email address for something of value. So what could be something of value? It could be a webinar that you're putting on. It could be an, a miniature email course that they get one email per day over the course of 10 days. So let's brainstorm some ways that you could juice up your newsletter campaign and make it a little bit more compelling. So think about the best and the worst. What are the biggest benefits that people get by using your service? And on the flip side, what are the worst things about their failing to use them, their, your service? So for example, if you're a dentist, healthier, whiter teeth, you know, brighter smile, feeling better about yourself, those could be some things that are benefits to using your service. Some of the downsides of not using your service might be tooth pain, bad breath, um, having a deterioration of your overall health, which is associated with poor oral hygiene. So make a list of the best and the worst, and then think about what's most compelling. And actually, we'll do some keyword research soon, and that would be a good place to look at the types of things people are searching for in conjunction with your industry and offer a special report that caters to the questions that people are researching. You can also think about what's your best converting product or offer, what's your highest profit product or offer, and make special reports or other incentives based around those things. Okay, so think about this and work on some, some good headlines and some offers that incorporate exactly the best or the worst. And you can have more than one if you want. You could put different offers on different pages of your website depending on the content that's there. And then let's also think about the psychology of your audience types. The urgent purchaser is ready to buy now. He's the guy whose dishwasher just exploded and leaked all over the floor and he's on your website looking for you, the plumber. Uh, <laughs> he's the guy whose teeth are bleeding and falling out and he's looking for an emergency dentist. He's going to pick up the phone and call. He just needs to know what the phone number is. Okay. Then there's the researcher who needs more information. You know, I am just browsing. He's kind of looking and he needs to be convinced. He needs to be sold. So these are the perfect type of people to have opt into the email list so that you can build a relationship with them over time. Also having informative articles on your website and especially videos will really help them uh, to feel like they're getting to know you better. And the third audience type is the raving fan. These are people who have probably already done business with you and they're coming back again to see what's new, what's going on. And these are your community members who you really want to enroll in 
helping you spread the word and becoming uh, excellent referral partners. So uh, I have a lot of good referral systems, guys. If you need help with that, you can let me know. But referrals are a great thing to have and keeping people in the fold via email, uh, social media, newsletters, that type of thing is a great idea. So let's write down right now while we're here on the webinar getting productive the answers to some of these questions or at least write down the questions so you can think about it later. What is the psychology of your customer? Why does someone visit your website? Really, you know, what what problem are they trying to solve? What are they stressed out about? What's keeping them up at night? What do they really, really, really want? And so if you're selling shoes, they might want the shoes, but what they really, really, really want is to look good at work so they can get a raise or to look sexy when they go out on their date and um, impress the person that they're with. So. You know, it might not be the obvious thing, like they want shoes. That might be that they want a feeling that buying shoes provides. So think about that. What's their goal? And try to enter the conversation going on inside their head. Do they need the shoes really fast because it's Wednesday and the date is coming up on Friday? Do they want, you know, I have to go to this wedding and the shoes have to be white. Are they going to be comfortable? You know, what are their concerns? and try to design the website based around the conversation that's already going on in their heads. Okay, so let's switch gears here for a minute after that exercise and talk about how do you monitor your traffic and conversion on your website. And this is a Google Analytics that's totally free for you to use. Here's what it looks like. This is a Google News site that my partner and I set up last year. I'm just going to show you a peek at this so you can see how Google Analytics works. This is a screenshot from Inside Analytics and it shows you how many visitors you get each month. You know, so up here it says 9,000 visitors. Okay. And then it shows you where the traffic is coming from. Could be from search engines like Google, Yahoo, Bing, paid search like Google Ads, Words, uh, Facebook people who type it in directly off your postcard, etc. So, and that this over here is the part that I really like, which is the keyword. If people are finding you using keywords, this tells you what they're searching for. So, um, you know, here it's got Prince William, UFOs, Sarah Palin. So those were some things that were hot in the news that month. And if we wanted to write articles that would attract more traffic, we could have chosen to focus on writing more articles about those topics. So you might also use this to find keywords that people are finding you with that you weren't even aware of. They might find your dentist site by typing in teeth whitening while all of your articles were focusing on tooth whitening. So if teeth whitening is a good term that people are looking for, maybe you want to amp up your efforts to get more traffic from that term. Write more articles about that, build more links to your site using that, you know, kind of entering the conversation that people are having, use the same terminology and the keywords that they're already using. Okay, so let's, let's talk about generating traffic. We're kind of segueing here from website conversion to traffic generation. And there are two primary ways to get traffic. AdWords, which is paid, and uh, SEO organic, which is not paid. Up here in the red, uh, you have to pay. If someone clicks on your link here, then Google's going to charge you a buck or two bucks or three bucks, whatever they have told you, and you set your own budget. So you can say, I'm willing to pay up to uh, 95 cents to have somebody come to my website. So if 100 people come to your website, that would cost you $95. And you should know by using Google Analytics and tracking your stats out of every hundred people who come, how many people give you a phone call, how many people enter your email, and what are those folks worth. So if, if you're a dentist, this is a dentist example, a hundred people come to your website, two of them call you and one of those makes an appointment, you've just spent $95 to acquire a new customer. 
And then going back to that math that we did earlier, what's the value of that customer to you? And um, some of the lead generation dentists pay like $250 to have per new appointment. So if we were going to do something where you paid us a, a flat fee, you might pay us, you know, $100 to get the phone to ring for you or $250 to get an appointment just as an example that would depend on your numbers in your marketplace you could pay you could choose to pay us only for results if we decided to set up an agreement along those lines and if we did that then you'd need to know that your numbers would work and that your value your lifetime value of the client was high enough to make it you willing to pay that much for your leads so th that's why we did that exercise so that you could determine the value of your customers ahead of time. Now here in the blue box, these are organic search results. They're not paid for. You can't directly buy your way in. Um, statistics show that this area gets about, the blue area gets about two thirds of the clicks and the red area gets about one third of the clicks. People trust this um, blue organic search engine results more because they don't feel like it's necessarily a sales pitch and they're getting sold to. They feel like it's more trusted and more honest. It's not an ad. So, you know, it may or may not be true, but that's people's perception and that's why they click there. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of pay-per-click advertising? The advantages are you get your ads up there very quickly. You turn on a campaign today, your ads are appearing tomorrow. So you can get traffic and customers immediately and this can actually be really valuable, especially if your business is cyclical or, you know, maybe you need more business because May is traditionally a slow month. So you crank it up and now you have more business in May or you're going on vacation. It's July and you need to take a break. So you turn off your ads. You don't pay for the marketing that month because you're going to be out of town. So that's a nice, they're very responsive. Additionally, you only pay for people who are interested. So if you have a newspaper ad running, you're going to pay the same amount whether or not you get any calls to show it to people <laughs> who may or may not be interested. So in this case, you can show it to lots of people and you only pay when people are interested. So that can help you with testing different headlines and seeing which ads are most effective and then uh, You'll be able to hone in your marketing message there. Only pay for the people who are interested. And once you get, for example, a headline that tests very well, you can broadcast that out to your other marketing, your, your um, newspaper ads and your postcards and that type of thing so that you've tested what works on AdWords. You've gotten a lot of good intelligence data and then you can proliferate that. And also with AdWords, you can do local targeting. So you could say, I only want people within a five mile radius of my store. And that way um, you're not marketing to people who are a hundred miles away from you and are not gonna be willing to drive out. So the disadvantages are that you must pay for each click. So if you're very successful in a way, it could be very expensive. Um, hopefully you've got your entire sales funnel converting well so that you have a, a positive return on that investment. And there can be some complication and it, you know, it can take some effort to manage those, those campaigns. For search engine optimization, the organic free listings, the advantages are that clicks are free. And so if you're very successful, if you're this number one listing right here, you could have five times as many people coming to your business now, but you're not going to have five times the cost and customers prefer organic listings, so they're already a little bit warmer. Their guard is not up quite as much when they come to your site. The disadvantages are that it takes a longer time to achieve rankings. You know, typically I tell people to expect three to six months to be on the first page of Google, and Google changes their ranking formula often. So, you know, if you're, you might be doing really well and getting a lot of business from Google one month, but if there's an algorithm change, it could bounce you back down and uh, might take a while to recover from that. So it's good to have 
uh, I call it multiple lines in the water, fish in five different fishing poles, not just one. So I was just going to show you uh, some examples here. This is how, you know, we get things ranked for number one. Uh, cleaning service, you can get multiple. This is one of my attorney clients. We got him the top seven spots on Google for a keyword that he wanted to go after. Dominating four spots on Google's first page. So you can see, you know, once you kind of get the momentum going with this, you can have a lot of not just one position, but multiple positions. And that can really be compelling. When your client sees you dominating something, you know, the first page like that, they get pretty excited. They, they perceive you as the authority. So if you want to have results like this, then you need to find out what search terms people are looking for. Let's say you were selling this product here in the picture. What would you, what keyword would you target in order to have people find this product on your website? Would you call it a house warmer, a room illuminator, uh, adds brightness, but you know, that could be a light bulb. What What is this thing? What are they called? Well, my mother-in-law knows because she is a candle shopper. It's called a jar candle. And she always has wonderful smelling candles at her house. So if you were selling these products, you'd want to have your pay-per-click ads appear and have your um, organic search engine rankings appear when people typed in the word jar candle or the phrase jar candle. So here are a couple of free tools from Google you can use. Write this down. The first one is Google Insights for Search. And what you can do is see what kind of trends are appearing for this uh, keyword. And as you can see, if you type in jar candle, Every year, there are a lot of searches around, guess what, Christmas time. <laughs> and then in the summer, they go down, and then in winter and Christmas time, they go back up again. So this is a somewhat cyclical product, uh, but if you were running ads and wanted to know when the best time to sell jar candles is, this would be a good thing to look at. You can also use Google Insights for search to look at regional differences. So um, you know, maybe on the East Coast where my mother-in-law lives, they have, they call them jar candles. And maybe up here in the Northwest, they're called scented candles. So they could have different lingo or terminology depending on where it is that you're located. So Google Insights for search will help you uh, figure that out as well. And then here, uh, this is a, a third tool. I'm not sure how many tools we've looked at yet. This is a different tool uh, called the Google Keyword Tool. Just search for Google Keyword Tool on Google and you'll find it. And this tells you how many people are searching for your terms so that you can choose the more popular terms. So, you know, here's a, a dentist example. We've got 9,000 people searching for dentist in Nashville as their phrase. And we only have 73 people searching for sedation dentistry in Nashville. So what this tells us is if you have sedation dentistry as a focus of your practice, you could probably, you have low competition there, you could probably rank for it pretty well. But, you know, not that many people are looking for it. It might be a better investment to go after a word like dentist in Nashville that has, you know, what is that? A hundred times more people searching for it. You might just have a, a little bit higher return on investment there. So, on the other hand, if you're using pay-per-click ads, you can target all of these words and you can decide how much to bid and I would bid more for a keyword term like sedation dentistry because it's very focused and very targeted. And if that's something that you emphasize in your practice, you're going to be very appealing to somebody who types in a, a keyword like that. Whereas if they're just generically looking for a dentist, we don't know as much about them. Are they looking for, um, you know, cosmetic dentistry? Are they looking for a pediatric dentist? Do they need an emergency dentist? 
we don't know as much about them, so it's harder to enter that conversation in their head and sell ourselves via the website. So that is probably not a keyword that's going to convert as well. So it's just, you know, things to evaluate as you're looking at your, your marketing strategy, but this is a good place to start and see what terms people are using to find you. Okay, so here's, here's the overview of, the, of this uh, traffic generation. So the step one is to go to the Google keyword tool and find the keywords that people are searching for. Then you go to Google AdWords and create a little classified ad within the AdWords. And they have a tutorial that will walk you through it. And you, you should write an ad. Need sedation dentistry? Call us 24 hours a day. You know, stress-free dental experience. You know, that type of a thing. You write a short ad like that. And you say how much you're willing to pay to get people to come. You know, maybe it's 95 cents per click, maybe it's $3 per click. You'll have to test that. I recommend that you start with a test of about $25 a day. If you can't afford that, you probably can't afford AdWords. So set a budget of $25 a day that you're willing to spend getting clicks on your ads. And then for every keyword, let's say you're targeting sedation dentistry, you'll write two separate ads with two different headlines and you'll see which one gets more clicks. So that's your winner. You keep running that one and you change the other ad to another headline that you think will be even more effective because the higher the click-through rate on your ad, the more people who see it that click on it, the lower Google will charge you. So it's in your best interest to have an ad that makes people click on it and you can optimize your campaigns by testing. And like I said, you can choose as many keywords as you want. And sometimes it makes sense to have a lot of, you know, maybe you have five or 10 phrases around sedation dentistry that direct people to your page that focuses on sedation dentistry. Maybe you have another five or 10 or 20 keywords on cosmetic dentistry and tooth whitening, veneers, you know, that type of a thing. And you direct people to the cosmetic dentistry section of your page when they click on those ads. You have a third section on, you know, dental health, dental pain, abscesses, uh, root canals. And so you can really continue that conversation in the head from the keyword that they search for to the ad and the headline that they see, and then the page that they land on for your site and the call to action. You can have a page that says for sedation dentistry, you know, do this and that's all set up on the sedation dentistry page and so instead of sending all your traffic to the same page you can target your ads and your visitors to the pages that are most relevant to their search that's a really important thing to do on adwords and if you've had trouble if you've maybe tested adwords in the past and it hasn't been effective for you this could be a really good clue and i'll give you another clue since i'm excited about it <laughs> make sure that you type in negative keywords. So when you do your keyword research, if you see terms that are not applicable to you, maybe like cat tooth problems or dog, you know, animal dentistry or dentistry schools or things like that, then you can include those words like cat and animal, dog, veterinary, school. Those types of things should be listed as negative keywords. So if somebody types in like dentist school in Nashville, then they will not be directed to you because you are not a, a university teaching people how to be dentists. You're looking for patients. So those negative keywords, that's another really good tip for AdWords. Okay, so set up your AdWords campaign and then monitor and split test until you get it profitable. Search engine optimization. This is the, the quote unquote free traffic. So the, the thing to remember here is that this is really a popularity contest. How do you get your site to rank number one on Google? It's the site with the most votes that wins and gets up there. And what does it mean to get a vote? 
two things. It used to be just getting a lot of other sites to link to your site was enough. And now Google is starting to incorporate what they call social signals, which is having people on Facebook like your page, plus one your page, retweet um, posts with your page and that type of a thing. So having a social media campaign that complements your search engine and website campaign is starting to become more and more important. And that's actually what we do for our clients. We help them get links to their sites, um, both from other websites and from social media. And using this new ranking program, this is actually a, a program that's been put together in a mastermind group and tested over hundreds of websites. The data is shared and we all see what's, what's working the best. And it's always changing, but looking at this, the collective body of sites that's been there for um, at least three months on this plan, we are seeing actually all of the sites are on page one of Google for the chosen keyword, 100%. And frankly, I mean, that's an amazing success rate. It's unbelievable. I'm almost like, oh, should I put it up or will they not believe this? <laughs> so all of the sites, have gotten up to page one so far, hundreds of sites using this link building campaign. And 70% of the sites are in the top three positions, which as you know, are the ones that get the most clicks. And then 25% are in position one. And guys, let me tell you, these are not local sites like Dentist in Nashville. These are nationally and internationally competitive sites going for words like, um, you know, things that people could shop for and buy across the country and, and have mail ordered to their house. So if you have a, a business that's strictly focused locally, you're going to have it be even more effective, essentially. So um, anyway, that's what we do. And I'm going to give you a little overview here for how you can, you can set up a piece of this too. So, uh, the thing that of these that tends to be hard for people to understand is how do I get more links to my site? I think if you're already involved with Facebook, maybe you have a Facebook page or that type of a thing, a blog, what you want to do is when you publish new articles, you want to tell people at the end of the article, make sure you like this on Facebook and you have the little buttons right there for them to do so. But this is about being you know, in the mix of conversation. But what you might not know is how to get links to your site because that's not something that you control on your site. That's not a page on your website. That's something that you have to get other people to do who own websites that you do not own and you do not control. So the key to this is going back to the concept of trading. People are happy to trade you for a link on their site or you can buy them. The trade is you write an article for me and I'll give a link back to you. And there are actually a lot of different websites, uh, sort of a family of websites called Web 2.0 sites or article directory sites that allow you automatically to post content like an article and include a link back to your site. So here's just a, a short list of these. I don't want you to get overwhelmed. Just write these down. Easy in articles, go articles, buzzle, squidoo, and article alley. These are five good ones to start with. They're very user friendly. So what you'll do, I'll just give you the, the business plan here, guys. This is what we do for our clients. I'm pulling you behind the curtain. You can do it yourself or have, if you have somebody that works at your front desk and answers phones, they can do this for you when the phone isn't ringing, okay? If the phone is busy ringing, then you're already doing well. So um, so what you do is you write, you'll, okay, we'll go back to the beginning. Keywords, select five or 10 keywords that you want your site to rank for in Google. It might be the name of your business, Edmonds Landscaping. It might be uh, the city, you know, landscaping in Linwood. It, it might be, um, best landscaper in Seattle, something like that. Find out which which terms have reasonably good search volume, which means a lot of people are looking for them, and select those keywords. 
Then you'll write an informational article about each topic. So you'll write a lot of landscaping articles <laughs> and you can outsource that to a freelancer. You can have, you know, maybe you just do it yourself one per day, but you'll write up those articles and submit them to these article directories. Go to Easy and Articles first because they do not accept content that's been published anywhere else. But after it's been accepted on Easy and Articles, you can use the same article on Go Articles and all the other directories there. So just repurpose the content. Um, and when we do this, I mean, we actually use hundreds of these sites, but I'm just going to give you five to get you started so that you actually implement it. So write an article for each of your five to 10 keywords, post it on each of these sites. So that could be five articles on five sites. That's 25, I believe. So you'll do that each week and it'll take you several hours, but you'll do that each week and you'll start to monitor your results and see which terms you're starting to rank for. And here's an example of what it will look like. This is one of the sites. This is ezinearticles.com. And you can see that this article is about car repair. You know, it's not fancy. It happens all too often. You walk into a car repair shop and have a problem addressed, usually something quite obvious and simple, such as a cracked side view mirror, or maybe just a regular oil change. Okay, this is not the greatest article ever. It doesn't have to be. Just write something that's about 500 words long, which is about a page, and post it up there. And then in exchange, at the bottom of your easy articles, you get to have what's called an author box, which includes two links back to your website. And these links, you can see the anchor text. His anchor text is Car Repair Seattle, Washington. So that's the keyword that he's trying to rank for. You should put your keyword that you're trying to rank for right here in the link to your site. You can also, it's a good idea to mix it up so that it looks natural. You can also just put your, your regular URL there. And this is a post by Meineke, which is a, a franchise car repair shop. So the big guys are using the strategy. This is how it works. You can do the same thing as the big boys. You don't need to spend $3 million on a Super Bowl ad. You can go to Easy and Articles and do it for free. So let's recap what we've covered here. I know it's, it's, we're getting close to an hour and I want to be respectful of your time. So let's just go over what we've learned and you have in your notes. Number one, your website, your website must speak to your prospects. You need to enter that conversation that they're having in their head. Second, you need to monitor your results using a Google Analytics account or some other form of analytics tracking so that you can see what pages are bringing in customers, where you're losing customers, what terms and keywords people are using to find you, how long people are staying on the site, all that good data is available to you. So you need to look at it and help use it to always be constantly improving your site. Then third, you need to keep an eye on your keyword research as trends and news articles appear. Use that Google Insights, your analytics data, the keyword tool, so that you can stay on top of, you know, if you're a jeweler and there's a royal wedding or you're in fashion and there's, you know, some big red carpet event, you can incorporate news events that are going on into your articles on your site and that tends to generate more interest. Um, and so then always, you know, keep on submitting new articles. That's not unfortunately a once and done. It's something that you'll just need to invest some time to do on a regular basis. All right. And with that, I, that's how you will have Google domination and get the results that you need, like I showed you before and all the, the customers that you need as well. So, um, I mentioned, I, I don't know if I might've forgotten to mention to you, but I want to give you a special gift for making it, you know, all the way through the call here. And this is a hundred dollar gift certificate to Google AdWords. When you use this, you can sign up for AdWords and spend a hundred dollars on marketing and send traffic to your site. You know, that could be a hundred new clients or more or less, you know, depending on how you budget it. But this way you don't have to worry about making mistakes and costing yourself money. 
And all you have to do to get this is just email me, emily at riverrockgroup.com, put workshop gift in the subject line, and I will get that over to you. I do need to get your mailing address because that will come in the mail, so please include your, your mailing address on that. So I'm looking forward to helping you all get started with AdWords. This is a great place to start and find targeted traffic. And I have to say that there are many people here today who are absolutely great with the information that I gave you. Maybe you'll have a couple questions, you want to email me or give me a call, but you're going to take this and run forward and implement. And those of you are going to get results, I am happy to say. But there's another group of people here who you're just not going to go forward with it because either you're too busy, you don't want to do it, or maybe you'll have good intentions about implementing these things, but you're going to put it off and it's just not going to happen. So those of you want help. And for those people, I'm going to make a special offer today. You'll see if you look on our website, our packages to assist with this type of thing typically range from $800 up to $5,000 per month, depending on the type of results that you're looking for. But I'm going to be introducing a, a custom package just for people who are here on this webinar that I think you'll find very exciting and more affordable. What I've decided to put together is a program that basically helps you do all the things that we've talked about here on the call today. It's a three part package. The first part includes website conversion. It's basically a strategy session where I go through your website with a fine tooth comb and identify all of the elements that need to be addressed in order to make the site do what you want it to do, whether it's have people call you, have people join your email list, or have people buy your products. So it doesn't include uh, web design or anything like that, but we'll basically create a strategy and a blueprint that um, you can hand over to your web designer for him to implement, or you know we can do that if you like, but uh, it's basically how to turn your website into a sales machine specific to your niche and your business. So we'll do the customer psychology analysis, entering the conversation in their head, We'll review the lead generation tool that you want to use, be it a free special report, a video, an email mini course. What can we give them that's so enticing as bait that it encourages them to opt in or call you? And then we'll do the seven key elements, including the headline, the call to action, testimonials, appropriate graphics. We'll review all of that and make some suggestions there. And then last but not least, I always like to look at a website in the context of how does this look to the search engines? Is it doing the right things to get rankings on search engines that will uh, draw more visitors to your website? So that's more about traffic than conversion, but it is an important piece of what we look at when we evaluate somebody's website. So part one, this is a $500 value. We will completely evaluate your online strategy with your site specifically. Step two is the AdWords account set up for instant lead flow. So what we're going to be doing here is getting your phone ringing. <laughs> we'll select the targeted keywords. We will write ads and split test and track all of those ads so that we know which ones are resulting in calls. And we'll also do geographic targeting so that will only be showing the ads within your service area and not to Timbuktu and beyond. And then we'll also evaluate your website in the context of appropriate landing pages. So which pages on your site do you want to send people to based on the types of keywords that they're looking for and the ads that they're clicking on. And this typically would be $1,000 to set up and cost $600 a month to maintain. Number three, module three here, is the search engine optimization for total Google domination. So this is how we appear in the natural organic search results that get 70% of the clicks. So we're going to be selecting your targeted keywords. We'll perform a competitor analysis. So that's basically, 
We want a keyword that has a lot of people searching for it, but not so much competition that it's going to take you years and years to rank for it. We want to find that sweet spot where we can get you ranking in months rather than years, and but it still has enough people searching for it that it's worthwhile to be number one on that page. Then we'll look at We'll search engine optimize the designated web pages that correspond with these keywords and we'll do the monthly link building program. Remember, you want to be popular. So we'll be building links that point to your site and we'll also be incorporating our social signals like Google+, Facebook, Twitter, that type of a thing so that Google sees that other sites and other people are responding to your site and thus thinks it's important enough to be at number one on the search results. And typically this search engine optimization service costs $500 up front to set up and $500 per month to operate for three keywords. So here's what you get. The three modules, the website conversion makeover, the AdSense account setup and management, and the search engine rankings. And Typically, uh, something like this, if you just bought it piecemeal, would cost $2,000 up front and $1,100 per month to manage. And in addition to this, I have decided to offer a special bonus for everyone who takes advantage of this offer. We are going to optimize your Google Places account as well. So Google Places is that map with the red pins where if you look up something and you have those directory listings with a map that corresponds, it could be seven of them, three of them, one of them. Google plays around with the configuration all the time, but the point is that you want your business <laughs> to be appearing in Google Places. So we're gonna optimize that for you as well. We'll set up your Google Places account with all sorts of good content on the page information, pictures, videos, and then we'll also include targeted links and text maps, all of those things that Google wants to see in order to think that you're very serious about your business and it's active. In addition, we'll work on the social proof again here, right? So those five-star reviews from your clients, we have a program that we will uh, license to you included in this package where you can solicit testimonials from your clients. It's very effective. One dentist who did this got, I want to say, 42 people within a 24-hour period uh, putting up reviews on his site, on his Google Places page. And that's the type of thing that really shows Google this is an active business. It has a big client base. It's important enough to rank on the first page of the results. And in addition, we'll build citations, which are the Google Places equivalent of backlinks. It's basically um, citations are listings in other directories like the Yellow Pages, uh, Yelp, the Better Business Bureau. Many of these you might already be on, uh, be, but we will register your business in hundreds of them, literally hundreds, so that Google sees you repeated and popular across the web. And the cost for this service is $500 to set up and $250 per month. So including the bonus, here's what it looks like. You'll get the website conversion makeover. You'll have the AdSense account set up and managed every month. You'll have your search engine rankings optimized and rising to uh, the top positions in Google and you'll get our bonus Google Places set up and optimization along with those reviews which are so valuable guys. I really want to make sure that everybody can take a part of this. And as you can see adding up the numbers, the uh, the value here is $2,500 as the setup fee and $1,350 per month. And that's the uh, the special kind of, you know, using this webinar pricing that's what this would all add up to. But there's more good news. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to be charging you that much. In fact, what I want to do is go ahead and cross out that $2,500 setup fee altogether. And that $1,350 per month 
I want you to cross that out and we'll, we'll lower that too. I'll tell you what that is in a minute. But for anybody in this room who feels like they're ready to move forward and would like to move forward with me, I'm willing to help you for as little as $495 per month. I'm going to completely waive the setup fee and reduce the monthly fee just so I can show you that I can help you and that you will get a return. Here's what that looks like. I put together three packages here. The search engine authority package is just for the natural organic search engine results. So you, you do get the website conversion makeover, but you don't get the AdWords traffic. I put this in because I realize that AdWords requires an additional investment on your part. They're the cost of the ads that you pay to Google, and some people may not have that in their budget. But you're going to get everything else. You'll get the website conversion makeover, the search engine domination package that has all the websites using it ranking on the first page of Google. Let me just say that again. <laughs> this will get you up there where traffic and visitors are coming to your site. And then we'll also give you the Google Places optimization bonus. You can get all of that for $495 per month. I can't make it any more fair than that. The second column here, this is the instant traffic with AdWords. If you do not want to do the search engine domination because you're concerned it might take too long, or you don't have the budget to do both, but you want to try AdWords, then this middle column is the one that I would recommend for you. It does not include getting to the first page of Google and the organic results, but it does include the bonuses and the website conversion makeover. The third column is where you get everything that we talked about here today. You get the website conversion makeover, you get the AdWords instant traffic, you get the search engine domination, and you get the Google Places optimization. This is everything for $695 per month that would normally cost twice that amount and you're getting such a huge value here. I, if you can afford it and you want to be getting those 10 new clients per month online, if you want your phone to be ringing, this is the place I would encourage you to start. Now I realize that this is not going to be right for everybody because I'm very selective about who I work with. I don't work with people who I'm not convinced I can help and I frankly don't work with people who I don't enjoy working with. <laughs> so no prima, donna, no prima donnas, just nice, genuine, friendly people who I believe are offering their clients an excellent value, have good customer service and follow through, and who I think based on evaluating your keywords, I'll do some research on your industry and make sure that I think that we can really be effective with these strategies. And if not, I won't take your money and I'll, I'll send you someplace else and give you some other recommendations. So just because you go ahead and click on the button to buy this now, it doesn't mean that we're guaranteed to be working together. I'm going to be calling everyone who purchases this so that we can make sure it's a good fit for me as well as being a good fit for you before we get started. So again, if you want everything that we talked about right here, the website conversion makeover, the AdSense account setup and management, search engine rankings, and the Google Places setup, then you need to order the total domination package for $695 per month. There will be no setup fees there are no long-term contracts. Everything is month to month. You're in control of the billing. So if you decide to cancel at any time, that will be completely under your control. And it's just an excellent value, guys. This is where the internet is going and you need to make sure that you're there. The sooner you invest and pull ahead in this regard, the longer you'll be able to reap the benefits and the more authority your website will have in the long term. So I really want you to take advantage of it, which is why I eliminated the setup fees and slashed the monthly management fees to the bone. Obviously, these are very labor intensive services. 
we went through exactly how to do them, writing all those articles, distributing all those articles, writing all those ads, tracking all those ads, monitoring the analytics. It's a lot of work and it takes a lot of time. And the good news is that it works very well and it's very effective, but it is going to be an investment. So if you agree that the internet is going to be an important part of your business moving forward, then you need to decide right now how you as a business owner plan to take advantage of that. Do you plan to invest your time or your money to make it happen? And the Small Business Administration estimates that a business owner's time is worth $250 per hour in general. How many hours would you have to spend <laughs> doing this each, each week and each month? A lot. And so being able to pay somebody else to do it, not even a full-time, even hiring a part-time assistant to sit at your front desk and do these things for you would cost much more than we're charging. There's no employment tax. There's no new person to train. We're, we're bringing the expertise to you. We have the systems, and you do not need to add another employee to your staff to manage. Um, this is all turnkey done for you. You can be as involved or uninvolved as you like in the strategy and the process. So we've done everything we can on our end to make it easy for you. If you have questions, please feel free to type them into the box. Otherwise, I want you to go ahead and select the package that you'd like to implement and go ahead and decide on that here. I am very much looking forward to seeing you. I hope to be putting together more webinars and videos that will offer additional training, and I hope you can join me on those. It's been a real pleasure to be here today, and I look forward to uh, talking to you on the phone and deciding which of these packages is the best fit for you. So please go ahead and select the one that you think makes the most sense, and then I'll follow up with you with a phone call, and we'll get started with the implementation. So thanks again for joining me and I hope you have a great day.